Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm very excited for today's video because we are going to be talking about one of my favorite things, eyeshadow palettes. So this is a video concept that has been around for a while. This is my third year doing it. Um, I don't remember who started this, but I will have stuff in the description box, but I really like this idea. So this is the concept of if I can only keep 10 palettes, what would I keep? I have around 100 eyeshadow palettes in my collection, maybe 110. Um, I actually haven't counted in a while, but it's around 100. So pairing down to 10 is quite the task. Um, and this is a really hard thing for me because eyeshadow is something I really love. And I like color stories and nuance and color theory. So pairing down to what would be 10 if I had a capsule collection of just these things is hard. Um, but a lot of fun. And I think it's a really interesting experiment. So, so like I said, this is the third year that I'm doing this. I did this in December last year and the year before. And I think it's really interesting to see what, how my choices change. Hi, Bean. <laughs> how my choices change over the years based on what I own, what's in my collection, what's come into my collection, what's left it, how my makeup preferences have changed over time, all of that. So really excited for this year's video. And, and I think if you have been here before, you will be both surprised and not surprised by my picks. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Colin. I'm a non-binary Latinx scientist and lover of makeup with a definite soft spot for any makeup and high-end makeup. Um, and you'll see both of those today. And I tend to take a pretty analytical approach to the content I make, be it reviewing a new product or using things I already know and love. I just try to make thoughtful analytical content and I have new videos every week. So I'd love to have you subscribe. <laughs> Okay, so this year was very difficult. There was a handful where I knew exactly, like these five are gonna be here, but filling in the rest and narrowing it down from like 15 to 10 was really hard. If you're curious about my makeup, by the way, it'll be in the description box. Uh, it's just what I wore today to work. And then I was very short on time this morning. So I just had the Victoria Beckham contour stick like on my eyes and a little bit of mascara to like add some definition. And I did throw an eyeshadow on and you will see which one when we get to that palette. Um, and then I like refreshed my powder and lip gloss. It's just my uh, poolside lip gloss from Victoria Beckham that I wear all the time. <laughs> and like I said, I was in a hurry so I didn't wear foundation or anything, it's just a little bit of the House Labs concealer, a little bit of blush, bronzer, that kind of stuff, but I'll have it all in the description box. Also, I did recently in a video talk about some getting ear, new earrings. That was hard to say. Um, and I got those Monstera ones that I wore in my last video. And then I also got these little hoops, which I am very happy with. Okay, so Bean is in a mood, by the way, because my husband is going for a walk while I film, because he hasn't been out of the house all day, um, and I think she's mad, so she was running around. <laughs> okay, so before I start, there was a palette that I had included in this originally when I picked the palettes a couple days ago, and then I set it aside for something else. And so I do want to make an honorable mention to the Nomad Ghost Town palette. Um, this was almost, this was almost in the cut. You okay, Bean? She is jumping all over the place. Okay, so one of the first palettes that I thought of uh, immediately, and I think this was in my video last year, was the Ismea Industrial 1.0. I say 1.0 because there's a 2.0 now. I love this palette. This was my favorite palette of last year. I used it all last, a bunch last year, um, and then I used it all winter used a little bit this summer, and then I used it, I've been using it again now that the weather has shifted, um, because it is m a much more like dark and murky color story. I don't really want this in the summer when it's hot out and stuff. I'm not wearing a lot of eye makeup in the summer anyway, but as soon as the weather is like not hot and sunny and it's not 80, I just grab this immediately. I love these desaturated like green and gold shades. You've got some bright pops. I did wear this shade in the summer a couple times in this one. And then you've got these putty shades that are really nice and make a good base. I just love this. I know some people had some issues with some of these going getting hard pan and stuff. I haven't had an issue. 
I love this. I use it all the time. You can see it's like the, the stickers kind of starting to wear off. I adore this palette. This is in my top five that I own. So this definitely had to be here uh, because this is like my go-to kind of color story. I love that you can like, it's very painterly. Everything kind of layers together and you're just like, it's really fun to play with. I just love that. The second palette that I chose is one that came out this year and it was because I, when I'm thinking about, if I can only have 10 things, I wanna have my bases covered. I wanna have my cool neutrals. I wanna have my warm neutrals. I wanna have some sparkly shades. I wanna have some like murky, like smoky shades. You know, I wanna have all of my bases covered for what I want on a regular basis. And so when I was trying to think of like warmer neutrals, the first thing I thought of was the By Rita Remembrance palette. It's a mirror, so it's gonna be dirty all the time and reflect my ring light, but I love this palette. I think last year I had Flora Kalahari and I did almost put that in here, but it, I picked a different palette that has like a more condensed version of that vibe. And you'll see why I didn't pick Flora Kalahari, but I love this. I only have the two by Rita palettes. I wish I had the rainbowy one from before. I can't wait to see what they do in January. It's like January, February is when it comes out. This has been a staple in my collection all year, um, especially, I don't use these pinky tones, these my rosy pinky tones that often I have, but this like bronze neutral shade, this smoky kind of dark copper, um, and like the mattes in this part of it are staples for me and then when I want something sparkly I sometimes grab this really sparkly silver if I'm wearing a more cool tone look. Um, really like this lilac shade too. It's like really I don't use these shades that much I have like this one has a bit of a dip but like it's this that I use all the time so if I it has a lot of shades I love the formula it's really refined and elegant so like it's a good everyday palette. So if I wanted a nice warmer neutral or pink leaning thing, rosy, taupe. This is the one I, I would want for that. I don't really have a lot of those colors, but I do like having them and this is a perfect version of that. Okay, so uh, the reason I didn't pick uh, Flora Kalahari this year is because I want, to, I need to have Pat McGrath Midnight Sun and they are, they're not identical, but there is, enough overlap that I felt like this is a condensed version of that. I think I had both in my video last year. Um, I should have checked before. This is my favorite Pat McGrath palette. I really, really love this. You have my perfect transition shade Taboo. You've got this really beautiful blue purple, which I think just works really well. It blues my favorite color. And if I'm gonna wear a color, this is what I'm gonna grab. It looks just really nice against my brown eyes, my olive undertone. You've got a smoky olive shade here. You've got a bronze. You've got a charcoal to deepen things up if you don't want to go full black. Uh, one of the best sparkly toppers right here. I grab this all the time. This had to be in it. It's my perfect Pat McGrath palette. Uh, and I just love it so much. I think it's really underrated. I think people say it's a hard palette to use, but like, as long as you're not trying to mix the red and the green, it's really not that hard. <laughs> um, I just, I love it. Uh, it's all my favorite colors. It's some of my favorite textures. It's like the perfect Colin palette. So this had to be here. Flora Kalahari has similar like warmy neutrals. Um, it has like some olivey tones, some blue, like a dark, dark blue. It was very hard to not put that in here, but because I had Flora Kalahari and a couple other ones that you'll see in a second, it just didn't fit. Um, but if I could pick 11 or 12 palettes, Flora Kalahari would be in here. <laughs> and so next, the other two that kind of pushed Flora Kalahari away are coming up. I'll just do them both right now. And they are both by Natasha Denona. The first one, no surprise, Yuka. So this came out this year and immediately became my favorite Pat McGrath palette, or not, Natasha Denona palette. Um, this immediately became my favorite Natasha Denona palette. It is an olive palette and it's just perfect. I talk about this all the time. People who are here are probably sick of me talking about this, but it's the perfect palette for someone of my undertone and especially like 
if you're in that light, light medium to medium range, tan range, this is so good. I wish it went a little darker, but it does get, you know, you can get pretty smoky. A lot of these shades are like perfect neutrals. So you've got a couple warm neutrals, you've got a true neutral, you've got olive toned neutrals. Um, you do have a green, but it's, you know, like a teal. So that's just gonna look blue on me. But again, I love blue. You do have a dark olive. Um, and then you have some really beautiful shimmers and then, you know, this bright lime. But it's very olive heavy and that undertone just works well with my undertone. So this is another like perfect palette for me. So ha these two had to be here. And then the second one is the other Natasha Denona palette that had to be here, and that's Metropolis. I almost picked gold. I think gold was in my videos before, but with, because gold is like a good, perfect neutral palette with me, you've got a couple sparkly shades, which, but I have some in others. You have neutral to mustard tones in that, but I have some other neutrals coming up. I've got some neutrals in here. I've got, you know, the greeny, olivey tones in here. And then this has some of those plus some pops. This just has a lot of shades and I really love it. Um, you've got a lot of olivey tones up here. These are what I use the most. You've got a couple blue tones. You've got a like a, a green. This is a teal, but you know, it looks a little blue on me. You've got a true blue metallic here. You've got some more warm neutrals that lean a little more clay and a bunch of like bronzy tones, which look great on me. Um, so this this had to be here. This is one of her best palettes. I'm sad it's discontinued. Hopefully everybody that wanted it got it, but I love this and this had to be here. Plus it's it's got so many shades, it's really versatile. So some of them are a little redundant, but like I still love it. And I, uh, yeah, I just still love it. Um, also the fact that this is a big palette, but filled with the midi size pans. They're magnetic, so these are interchangeable, so I could mix and match these. Okay, so the next palette uh, is what bumped Ghost Town out of here. I wanted Ghost Town because it has those desaturated blues and greens, but I do have some similar tones in some of these others. Don't have anything quite like that, but you know, Flora Calahari and Ghost Town were like the 11 and 12 spot that just had to get pushed out of the way because I needed something small and travel friendly. I mean, I use bronzer in my crease a lot when I'm traveling, but if I wanted like a perfect travel palette slash everyday work palette, or if I was like traveling for work, it had to be the Surat Beyond Beige Quad. This is, <laughs> you'll see, there's, there's, this is a lot of expensive makeup. Um, that is something that has shifted in the last couple years. Um, this is like a $90 quad or a $98 quad, and you can make your own quads on the Surat website, but it's just so good. This formula is one of the best eyeshadows I've ever used. It's not too pigmented, but it does build on itself. So like, you know, even uh, this shade is lighter than me, but I can build it up and it makes a perfect all over the crease shade. Um, this is a nice deepening up shade. Uh, and then these satin shades are just really beautiful, easy to wear, not too much there kind of shades if I want them. And what I actually use a lot is I grab this and then I grab an all shimmer palette or I grab something like this, or I grab a single from my singles, which in this, imaginary scenario, I'm assuming I still have my single shadows, eh. but I like a lot of people, and what I used to do a few years ago was do a lot of colorful mattes, like my lethal singles, which I would still have in this idea, I think. Um, but then I would do, you know, and then a colorful shimmer. But what I've gravitated towards in the last year, year and a half is these kind of neutrals and then a color and then a shimmer. It's sparkly neutral or a sparkly color, but having that neutral base as the color. So this this just had to beat out Ghost Town and Flora Kalahari. Plus it's little, so it's easy to travel with. And the, the formula is just so good. So good. Um, this I did get in PR. The rest of the stuff I've bought so far. Um, actually, I think everything in this video I've bought except for this. <laughs> 
Okay, we're down to four palettes. So, I used to be very big into color. I used to say in my intro, like, I love colorful shadows. And I still really like color, and I do wear colorful shadows sometimes, but I'm not doing these big, graphic, colorful looks on a daily basis anymore. Um, something switched, like I said, like a year and a half ago, and I just slowly started working towards more neutrals and desaturated tones. But I didn't want some color. I almost put in my one rainbow palette, which is the Blend Bunny Blends palette, um, so that I had all of those rainbows uh, to do any kind of colorful look I wanted. But I really thought about it and I was like, I haven't used that palette in months because I just don't do those looks very often. And it would be nice to have just sitting there, but like with only 10, I need it to be something that I know I'm gonna use more. And so I picked something that's been in both of the other videos I've done of this. I picked the Club Nebula palette. So this is a couple years old now. It's te technically expired. I still use it, it still works, no issues. You don't have to be like me, but it is just powders. Um, I love this. This is colorful and it goes very dark, which I appreciate. Uh, if I'm doing color, I want a smoky look. And this has blue, green, these like desaturated purples, and then these peachy red tones. And this can get kind of bricky if I use it right. So these are the colors that I wear the most often. And if I wanted color, this is my colorful palette. It's also got some really beautiful iridescent colorful shades that I could pair with it or with this. It was just like a no-brainer that this has been there every year, but this used to be one of many colorful palettes and now it is the colorful palette, which, I mean, there's one other thing that's pretty colorful as well, but like as far as colorful mattes and like a color, colorful eyeshadow look, this is, this would be my option. And I'm actually not mad about that. I mean, I don't want to do this in real life. I love all of my other palettes. Um, <clears throat> If I didn't like them, I would get rid of them, and I have gotten rid of a bunch of them recently. And I am working towards paring down things even more, but uh, yeah, it's just so good. I wish this was a permanent palette. I know it's a collaboration, so it's never going to be permanent, but like, it's, it's just a really good palette. <laughs> I almost bought a backup, and I'm glad I didn't because I've had this for a couple years, and I do have some dips in these, but I'm like, I haven't used them all up. Um, that is a fear of mine. Like, I don't... So, like, when I think... I might talk about this in another video soon, but, like, when I think about makeup, when I think about, like, complexion products, they're very utilitarian. So, like, I've used a lot of lip glosses up. I've used mascaras up. I've used brow gels. I've used a bronzer up somehow. Um, I've used concealers up many, many times. That doesn't bother me. I'm like, ooh, yeah, I finished that. It was worth my money. Like, I'm proud of that. But there's something about eyeshadow where it's, like, the complexion is utilitarian. It's just meant to, you know, I want my skin to look better or look a certain way, you know, either more matte, more shiny, or like do a, something with my skin. But eyeshadow is like the fun thing, the special thing. And so it, like using an eyeshadow up stresses me out because then I don't have that pretty thing anymore, even if I have other pretty things. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand it, even as an anthropologist, don't fully understand it, but they're just like different categories in my head. So I've got three palettes left. I'm gonna do the last neutral thing and then we'll talk about a couple more colorful things. So the other neutral thing, like I said, I needed warm and cool and true neutral. So I've got like true neutral and then I've got, you know, some more olivey neutrals and some warmy neutrals. I've got all my bases except for cool. And my perfect cool tone palette is Mothership number one. It's so good. These two are like tied for my favorite mothership. Um, I love the artwork on this one too. Um, but this is one of my most used palettes. I love it so much. It doesn't look like it because I have so many and I'm pretty gentle. Um, but there are some dips in these two shades and I've used this purple quite a bit. But it's like my perfect neutral cool palette without being too cool. So you've got this taupe, a slightly darker taupe, and a black. You could have a black shadow. Um, and it's a really good black. Um, I don't think any of these other ones have an actual black eyeshadow. There's some black putties in the Isamea. Um, 
you've got some satin shades, so you've got a satin highlight again, but you've got like a cool lilac-y shade and this interesting like, this all over the lid is like a perfect one and done kind of like taupey smoky eye. And then you've got a blue shimmer, again, iridescent blue sparkly topper, blue purple sparkly topper, uh, pale gold, which this kind of gold is my favorite kind of gold, either an antique gold or like this kind of pale shade. It's just such a good palette and it's not too cool that it looks like ashy and gross on me. Um, I do still want to buy Lisa Aldridge Vega and if I had that, that might be a contender for this cool spot, but I don't think it would beat this. Um, I just, I love this so much. I think that was my first Pat McGrath palette. Maybe my second. Midnight Sun might have been my first. I think Midnight Sun was my first, and it's still... And that was my second, because I was like, I know these are the ones I want the most, so I'm going to buy them in the order of the ones I want the most. <laughs> okay, so I've got two palettes left. Uh, the next one is another one that came out this year, and will be no surprise to anyone who's been around before, and it's the Industrial 2. This is... This and Yuka are like head to head for which is my favorite palette of 2022, 2023. It's almost 2024. How am I saying the wrong year? <sighs> okay, <laughs> this is probably my favorite palette of the year. Like Yuka, I don't know. Yuka speaks to my soul a little bit too. They're kind of tied. Um, this was like the clear winner last year. This is a little more iffy, but I love this. This is what I have on my eyes today. Like I said, I just had the my contour stylus from Victoria Beckham. I put a little bit on in my crease and blended it out. And that was it for, and mascara for eye makeup. Um, and then when I got, because I was short on time, <laughs> and also no one was in the office today but me. <laughs> um, so I was, I saw like nobody all day. So it was like, what, who am I wearing makeup for? I didn't even go to the coffee shop. Um, I could, I was like, why? I was sitting there like, I haven't seen a human in four hours. Why am I wearing concealer and mascara? <laughs> um, but I adore this. So I'm wearing this shade right here, which is a duochrome from orange to green. It's one that I wear a lot because it's really easy. It's like the orange doesn't blend into my skin, but complements my skin. Orange, I think just works really well with my undertone and my skin depth. So orange blush is a common blush for me too. Um, and then that green, it just works so well. I really love this duochrome as well. It's all shimmer. Um, and if I didn't have my, in, my actual singles, you know, these would be the ones that I would grab for in this scenario. You've got a lot of color. Um, and so I could wear these by themselves like I did today. You know, I don't need a mat for this. I don't care. Um, I can wear some of these sparkly toppers by themselves. You can use this uh, more satin brown as a smoky eye by itself or as the matte, or I could pair it with something like this or something like this, because these are really beautiful shimmers, but they're not this. They're not this kind of sparkly duochrome. They're not the same kind of formula. Isamea has quickly just become, like I bought this a few months after it came out and then I bought Wildstar technically before it came out because I got it from her pop-up in LA, and then I got this the second it came out. It's they, She's fit, quickly become one of my favorite brands. Um, I love the formulas of the color stories. I enjoy the packaging and the themes. I just, it's like all there for me. Okay, and then the last palette is gonna be my Lisa Aldridge palette. This is the Sorcery palette. Um, this is another one that I wear all the time, and I thought these two would be like the perfect travel companions because they're both small they're lightweight this you've got another blue shimmer you've got a green um kind of cream to powder kind of matte formula so I could put like a brown and then use this if I wanted a more colorful look magical is one of the best antique gold shades and if I'm not going to have gigabyte from Pat McGrath in subversive I've got this and it's a little brighter than the, these. These are a little more subdued and like a little ashier and a little, not ashy as in like 
gray and gross, but ashier is in like, like soot. They're a little sootier, they're a little darker, there's a little more black to them. This is a little more like true antique gold, shiny metallic, um, really pretty tealy kind of shade. And then this mercurial shade is a really beautiful duochrome. It's got this like, per she says heather is the base color. So it's this like kind of mauve tone. And then it's got green and uh, like green teal kind of flip, but there's like a little bit of a neutral there to it. Really beautiful. I wear this all the time at work, just like kind of like how I'm wearing this, where I just have it all over. Um, so this had to be here. Love this. I want the rest of her palettes. Like I literally want them. Uh, I'm a little iffy on Muse just because it's kind of pinky and pale, pale, but I want the rest of them. <laughs> I uh, wish I could afford to buy them all. Okay, so that is my 10. Let me know what you think um, in the comments uh, about the 10, especially if you've seen my old videos. I'll have them linked below. Maybe don't watch the original one because that was when I just started on YouTube. <laughs> but, you know, if you want to know how they compared up before, you can check that out. Um, you'll see like a lot of color pop and stuff in the first one. Um, and there has been quite the transition in the last couple of years. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think about the palettes. What would you pick if you only had to keep 10? Maybe you only have 10, you know, most people have less than 10. Um, so let me know what you think of my picks, all of that. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. It really helps. Um, and I will see you all in my next video. Okay, I wanted this to be a fast video, and it took me five minutes to do my intro. Let's hope it's a good one.